Uh, my name is Jay Granzo. I know everyone has a bit of a different angle that we've been asked to, or at least asked to take care of here in, in our talks. And so I'm going to go over the, let me see if I can do this, over the comprehensive system. And this is really how do we take care of a lipedema patient? How is this different from a lymphedema patient? And, what, and how is this different from a cosmetic surgery patient? Um, oh, let me go back. That's super important. Um, this is, for me, a team effort. Okay, all these people, this is not about me and a surgery, it's about this whole team and all these individuals who come together to make all these things work for me, one surgeon. And I absolutely can't survive without them, I can't make this happen, so it, really the credit goes to everybody on the team. Also this team too, this is my family here, and um, I'll more on them later, but really they're having them um, be able to put up with me being at conferences and going away for these things. So. Uh, key points, lipedema is a complex disease process. It's not just liposuctioning like cosmetic liposuction. I mean, there's the devil in the details, and that's not totally simple either, but it's much, much easier, and we have to recognize that. I feel that the, they're having a comprehensive system that includes surgical and non-surgical components is absolutely key to getting those best results. Lipedema patients are much more complicated than the average patient. Each patient's treatment plan must be individualized for them, and the patient selection is critical, so not all patients are surgical candidates. And lymphedema must be distinguished from lymphedema because lymphedema is much harder to treat and different. So who am I and why listen to me? Um, I'm board certified in plastic surgery. I have a fellowship in microvascular surgery. So I come, I have cosmetic background, but I really come from the hard, um, heavy duty microsurgery background. We're doing big reconstructions, breast reconstructions. We've gotten smaller and smaller into the lymphatic reconstructions. I was a professor at UCLA. I retired in 2020 due to family reasons, and I'll go over that in a minute. And I am a member of the American Pla uh, Society of Plastic Surgeons. And so when I trained, I went around the world as part of my training, and I worked with all the top people at that point who were doing microsurgery. So this is Dr. Koshima in Japan. He taught me how to do LVA surgeries. That was in the OR there. This is Dr. Borson in Sweden. What's interesting, too, is he actually still does uh, dry technique. So it's not, not a tumescent technique, it's a dry technique. I think Dr. Singal at Harvard do, do that where they don't put the tumescent, they don't put the epinephrine, and so we've modified that technique. But he's really an absolutely very data-driven, wonderful individual who absolutely taught me a lot. I went, um, saw lipedema surgeons in Germany, so Dr. Stutz, Dr. Raprick too. Everyone has a different way of doing it like you see here. Okay. Um, with us, we get this. I was based in LA, but for family reasons, we moved to Florida. Economics are different, so we were actually able to buy a building and use that rather than have to lease the space, and so we actually put in a training center there. So actually, my team is in a CLT training course this weekend, happened to conflict, so that's why they're all over there in training. And we, um, at first, set up a satellite office during COVID to have, because we got so many East Coast requests for our patients, but then we found out that well, my daughter has Angelman syndrome, so never read, never write, never talk, motor and severe um, mental issues. That's how she talks with the talker right there. And so there are special needs schools, and so we actually moved our family there too, and the California office is now this satellite office. So what makes a lipedema surgical candidate, and is this even lipedema? That's key, and we spend a long time in the office working on this. So. For me, what's key is I have a therapist, we have them all, I'm able to, because I hire everybody, we're able to have control over how we do the process. You're gonna spend a half a day with us in the office. You're gonna have the therapist do an evaluation. PA is gonna go over this. We're gonna have a team meeting, then I'm gonna see the patient. We'll have a lymphocentigraphy. We at first had um, done that, and again, like Dr. Chen showed in the previous study, I, I pick up a lot of lymphedema and lipedema patients on lymphocentigraphy, which is the more severe study, the, the uh, ICG is more sensitive, and I think that's really important because those patients get treated differently, and I think the therapy component, the compression is absolutely critical, even in lipedema patients, because you uncover patients who have those mild degrees of lymphedema that need the compression long term. Compression is um, very important for everybody there, too. So. What's the difference? Here's a body jet. So this is the wall procedure. I think that works great, especially for local anesthesia. And you get more of a creamy custardy. This is a cosmetic case, but lipedema fat for me is at least somewhat similar to that um, stuff out. So lymphedema, entirely different animal. This is like curdled milk, okay, that's been sitting in your fridge or not. And um, 
and stuff that's come out, this is very, very different. I mean, you're hammering your hand, just like Dr. Chen was saying. I mean, my arm is sore after four hours of doing one of these, less so with the lipedema patients. So the difference between them, well, this is easy. Which one's lymphedema, which one's lipedema? Well, lymphedema is asymmetric, thicker skin. Lipedema, right there, those are pretty classic. What about these? Which one's lymphedema, which one's lipedema? Well, that's very advanced stage two lymphedema, and the other one is lipedema, which is um, not quite as advanced, but certainly it's very important. And so lymphocentigraphy will show these patients up in a second. And then the, what's, why is that important? Because the treatments are quite different as far as the compression we need to use and the longer term therapy, and then also sec second stage microsurgery. So I do the ICG imaging as well. I think it's very helpful to, in the operating room though, to, to guide me with my procedure. Um, and again, I found the same thing. You know, the ICG shows that the patients, I haven't had anyone get worse with the suctioning if you do it right. In fact, they usually get better, or a lot of times they get better, and we can see that in imaging. I think the inflammation goes down and the lymphatic system heals. That's why things get better in my eyes. The, uh, this has been brought up before, so this Renuvian or J-plasma device, um, I think that anything with a laser on it or an ultrasound, ultrasound already when I was in training, everybody in Miami had this ultrasound thing sitting there in the back you know, in their back office because they burned somebody with it at some point, so they didn't really use it. And so this has now come out last month. Um, we've seen no, multiple patients with this. They have this weird lymphedema. I think you burn the underneath and the surface of the skin. There are dermal lymphatics and collection, and, um, collection portions of the lymphatics in there, and I think that's probably what happens. I don't know, but we've seen enough of these, and I can't really help these patients. So for me, staying away from something that is energy at the tip of that Lymphedema, I mean, uh, liposuction wand is quite important. I don't think it helps with the skin. I think it hurts, and we've seen multiple patients, and I can't really help them. Local anesthesia versus general anesthesia, this comes up a fair amount. Um, local anesthesia, I think it's, it's great because it's cheaper for the doctor to provide, but it provides, it requires a committed patient. So you're going to, and you have limits on the toxicity of local anesthetics, just like Dr. Gutowski was saying in his very nice lecture. So you have to have a committed patient and somebody who doesn't want to remember the sights, sounds, smells, and stuff of the OR. Um, in gen with general anesthetic, I mean, you can do more. 10,000 cc's, yes, we can do it. We have a hospital, we stay. If you're a plastic surgeon, you can admit a patient to the hospital, but you do have more of a hangover and there's a marginally increased risk. Um, I think that's really, I haven't had a, a problem with general anesthesia in 10,000 cases, and I haven't had one with local anesthesia really either as far as just anesthetic problems so, um, that are just attribute to anesthesia. I think um, water assisted is, very nice if you're doing local, especially because you can really control some local anesthetic that gets in there, but you're going to be limited because I don't think you can treat the lymphedema with that. I do find skin retraction is important, um, but it happens on its own. So I don't actually find in my hands I need to have skin retraction. I have the therapist in the OR. This is my skin retraction. We bandage this. This is actually very specialized. You need very specialized. These are not ACE wraps. These are short stretch bandages. There's a lot of them. Um, and so they really come in and do that. Now, I, I come from the lymphedema treatment world, and so I have a lot of microsurgery techniques and other things, and those are gonna be adjuncts that happen afterwards. So here, um, if you can play the video here, please, I've actually attached a lymphatic into the vein right there. And so we can see in the bottom where it's draining in, the ICG, it will drain like that, and then the ICG, ICG here, this is the same exact scene, but ICG through the microscope, so you can see the lymphatic connecting into the vein. The vein's at the bottom. Unfortunately, I don't have a pointer here I can show you, but it will actually drain into that vein that's right there, so this is pretty cool. You'll see now, and there it goes into the vein. And so we do this as a second phase operation to keep patients down. That's a different lecture, though. So skin retraction after surgery. Um, lipedema, if they're not as advanced, uh, just like Dr. Gutkowski said, I think they come down, um, but I compress them, and I have the therapy that's in there to bring these patients down. If you have a very advanced one, you aren't going to get that retraction, that's true. Lymphedema, I will just um, very politely disagree with Dr. Chen. Um, I think they almost all come down, 99%, because there's so much inflammation in a lymphedema patient that that's going to shrink crack the skin, just like Dr. Borson's techniques too. But we, again, we bandage in the OR, we stay after it, et cetera, so that's how I get them down. Now, the one, there is a 1% of patients that don't come down, and that's someone like this where that skin is intrinsically damaged, you have a cuff, 
that's going on here. So this is a stage three where there is no skin. This is all skin goes down to fascia. It's one rind like that. So yes, that has to come out. And so that's prior to the surgery. And so this is with resection and we can get that down too with careful therapy. I'm finishing up here. And so this is something that is achievable, but that does require skin. But again, in one, less than 1% of the cases. Um, again, we can take out under general eight, more than eight liters of, um, these are four, two liter soda bottles as to what eight liters is. And so again, it takes a lot of the bandaging, a lot of the compression, a lot of that therapy integration to make this work. And so this is a patient, you've seen her here today, and she lets me use her pictures on this just because that patient also before had liposuction done, didn't work because you need the therapy component afterwards. I think that's extremely, extremely important. Thank you.